Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. Mark 19 and then verse 14. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed. And running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, What are you discussing with them? And one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought my son, who has a mute spirit. And wherever he sees him, he throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out. But they could not. He answered and said to them, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed, and he fell on the ground and wallowed full in at his mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood, God will want me to ask somebody today, How long has that thing been happening to you? And the father said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. I want you to take that note of that word, if you can do anything. Immediately the father of the child. So, verse 23 says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, with tears, Lord, I believe. But that what he said after made me doubt whether he believed. He said, Lord, I believe. Hell, my own belief. When Jesus saw that the people came together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to him, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead. So that then he said, Jesus, Jesus has killed him. He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he had come into the house and he arose. Let's, let's stop here. It is a convenient place to stop. So for a few minutes, even this morning, I'll be speaking to you on what I've titled, Only Believe. Look at your neighbor and say, Only Believe. Uh, look at your next favorite neighbor and say, Only Believe. All things are possible if you can believe. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Because the entrance of the word give light, give understanding to the simple. As simple folks, we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of men. After now, Lord, make us better people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So whether you are watching online or you are here, I want you to say to yourself, only believe. I can't hear you. Can you say only believe? Mark 9.22 says, if you can do anything, Take pity and help us. And that's the attitude of many of us. If you can do anything, please just have mercy and help us. But Jesus responded in a way that it's also the response even now. Jesus said, if you can, said Jesus. No, I go ahead on myself. If you can do anything, have pity on us, the man said. Do you notice the word, if you can? So they came to Jesus and they said, if you can do anything, please help us. If you can do anything, please help us. I mean, Jesus was amazed. Jesus said, if I can, if I can. You see, that word suggests, and I said it in our midweek service, and I said that Jesus was shocked at Nazareth, uh, in the synagogue in Nazareth. And what happened was that they didn't believe him. The Bible says so that he could dare do no mighty works. He couldn't perform miracles. And he was amazed at their unbelief. He was shocked. <laughs> he, was, he was looking like, how would, what will it take you guys to believe? Now, a man came to him and the man was telling Jesus, if you can, if you can. Now, these are not statements you tell people who are in authority. These are statements you tell people who are not in authority. You don't look at somebody in authority and say, if you can. Let me explain it to you in a way you will get it. Understand that? All right, so let's take, for instance, that you are looking for admission in the University of Lagos. 
understand you on admission in Inland. Now, if you know somebody who is like their administrative staff, uh, if you go to that person who is an administrative staff in that school, you probably go to the person and say, I need admission. No. If you can help me, it will make sense. Now, that's a good language because you know that I cannot write the admission list. So if you can help me, please help me. So the man looks like, okay, there is a chance, there is a possibility. I will try my best to help you. You understand that? But if you by chance knows the VC, if you now sit down before the VC and say, if you can give me admission, you know that there, there's something wrong somewhere. Because there's something called the VC list. So it's not if you can, because you know you can. So the man looks at Jesus and starts saying, if you can help us. That means that he didn't understand he was standing before an authority. I, I, I will explain it to you in another way. If you are looking for a job in a bank, and probably there's somebody who works in HR. <laughs> you know, there's a way people work in HR do behave like they are the owners of the bank. Understand that? So the person who works in HR who just, you, you just know the person say, hello, how are you? Uh, and the person says, please, sir. You can even kneel down. <laughs> it's been three years I graduated. Hey, Shanomi, please help me. Help me. If you can, do anything. But perchance you are seated before Illumelu, the CEO of UBA. If you now say, if you can give me a job, it's not if you can. You know he can. It's not whether he has the power. It is that, just give me this job. Baba, I don't know, but give me this job. Why? Because you are seated before the CEO. He owns the company. They can decide to sack everybody. You guys will shout, but he has sacked them. So that when you look at Jesus and that statement before him, this is just a situ simple situation of a demon possession. That anybody could have strained out. And he was asking, if you can do something. If you can't speak of perhaps, if your ranking spiritually have reached this level. Perhaps, if your ability have reached this level. Perhaps, if your influence has reached a level that can answer to my problem. Perhaps. It's from that perspective that we get that question the man was asking Jesus. It's a question that doubts the ranking and the ability and the possibilities of Christ. And that's the question many of us also ask. And that's why anytime that question is asked, Jesus does not respond with changing the situation. He responds by asking if you can. And what did Jesus say to him? And because you see, I'm not here to ask to, 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 to preach about if you can today. That's a message for another day. You know, many people say, if you can, give me a job. It'll be okay. If you can give me a spouse, it'll be all right. If you can give me a revelation, it'll be fine. You are doubting the ranking and the ability of God to change your life and to change your story. If you can. Listen, guys, we should never go to God asking if we can. If he can. Because he can. But that's not the core of my message today. Let's read what Jesus said. He said, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for the one who believes. Look at your neighbor, help me preach this sermon. Say, everything is possible to him that believes. Everything, not some things, everything is possible for one who believes. Only believe all things are possible. No, let me preach now. You, you have, you, I know I said, help me preach it. I've come to tell someone today that all things are possible. The job is possible. Healing is possible. Miracles are possible. Grace is possible. A country in Jesus is possible. Revelation is possible. A new depth in God is possible. New height in your vocation is possible. But Jesus said, if you can't believe. It therefore suggests to us that our level of possibilities is determined by us. Your level of light is not determined by God, it's determined by you. Listen to this, God said this to me. The mountain is not waiting on Jesus, it is waiting on you. When we talk about mountain, we mean sicknesses, we mean infirmities, obstacles. It's not waiting on Jesus, it is waiting on you. Listen to this. If you will build your faith, many of your challenges will just disappear. If you will build your faith, many of your challenges will just disappear. Can, can I say that to somebody again? If you will build your faith, 
many of your challenges will disappear. So that what you call challenges are really not challenges. What you call obstacles are really not obstacles. They are there because you have not grown. You have not grown. Listen to this, and this will shock you. You know, we do not have a devil problem. We have an unbelief problem. Dear believers, you do not have a devil problem. You have an unbelief problem. Jesus said he, he, he will strap upon serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy. Allow me to say to you, how do you tread? With your hand? Answer me. How do you tread upon? Do you tread upon with your hand? How do you tread upon? With your feet? Can you kill a flying bird with your feet? A flying bird. Can you? You would have to reach out to it. You shoot it. Can you reach um, a fish in the river and kill it with your feet? No. But can you kill a cockroach with your feet? Can you? Can you kill a hand, an ant with your feet? Speak to me. You can. That tells you that anything that is under your feet uh, tells you of the level where that thing is also operating. The level where the devil is operating is under your feet. It's not on top you. It is not above you. It is under your feet. So if the devil is under your feet, ladies and gentlemen, I've got good news for you. What you need to do is to tread upon him. Can somebody tread right now? Can somebody tread right now? There's no how to tread. Come on, tread upon that idiot. Tread upon that thing. Tread upon him. It's under your feet. You see, the way you think about the devil or talk about the devil, you are talking about the devil as if the devil is above you. The way you pray, the way you pray, let us fight, let us fight. Listen, all this all these concepts, it's making you believe that he's above you. But the devil is under your feet. You see, you must be a believer in scriptures. The word of the Lord is eternal. The word of the Lord is given to us as the meat for our lives. The will of the Lord is written in the book. If you can see the will of God in the book, you can live by the book. And the book says it's under your feet. Glory to God. He is a defeated foe. You see, when something has died, no matter how much you fear that thing, when a snake had died, you were not afraid to get, to get close to that snake. Because he's dead. The weapon is gone. He's dead. The devil is a defeated foe. He's a defeated foe. See, I say to you again, we do not have a devil problem. We have a what? An unbelief problem. If you will believe, Jesus said all things are possible. Only believe. Look at your neighbor and say only believe. You know that's a quotable quote. Only believe. Only believe. You see, for you to be audacious, you have to believe. There can't be audacity without the faith in the heart. You've got to believe. Believe in what God has given you. Believe in God's investment in your life. Believe in your possibilities. Believe in God's mandate for your life. Believe. Listen, if you don't believe, no one will believe in you. And that's why I also say you have to believe in your face. <laughs> believe in who you are. If you can't believe in, then everything is possible. You know, I've discovered that many ladies are not more beautiful than other ladies. It's self-belief. It's self-confidence. So, so, some people are so ugly, but the way they carry themselves, the way they do the makeup, they carry themselves, and, and they look like the most beautiful thing God has ever created. Whereas you see some beautiful folks, uh, lack of confidence, the way they even walk, they are sliced, they are sagging, sagging. How can you sag? Are you a prisoner? They are sagging. They are dragging their feet on the floor. They don't believe in anything. Nothing. All they do every morning is use white powder, methylated powder. That's all they do. And so they say they are not fine. It is not a problem that you are not fine. It's a problem of your belief. Beauty starts from the inside. Listen, when a man believes in what God has deposited in him, he lives differently. He lives differently. Is somebody speaking to me? You, 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 you live differently. Before you say, you know, I, I've come to church and I've been around church circles, man of God, for a, for a while now. And I've discovered that church folks have a way of saying, I believe, I believe, I believe. And you know, the way they say it, the way they talk it, they have even learned Christianese. So that they learn our language. He says, shall be where? Hallelujah. I want to give you practical signs that you will know that you are not, you are not believing in this. Practical signs that prove to you. Like you are seeing yourself in a mirror. You know, when you think, yeah, I've dressed well, I look so good. And then you stand before a mirror. And then you just discover that one of the, the button has just gotten out of shape. What's going on there is, is reflecting your image. I want to give you a mirror so that you can see your image. Even this morning. 
Ah, uh-huh. signs of unbelief number one: sleeplessness and lack of rest. Sleeplessness and lack of rest. I mean that you go to bed by 10 p.m., you are awake 1 a.m. Rolling around. The troubles of your life is appearing to you. In fact, it seems like at night it comes as 3D. So that you can't sleep. The pressure want to kill you. It's getting worse. Sir. That's what they say. You need to learn how to put things at Jesus' feet. It shows. It shows. It proves that there's no faith here. Because if you believe in God, you will rest. You see, faith, a, a, a language of faith is rest. The language of faith is peace. If you don't have peace, if you don't have rest, it's a sign. It's a sign. Somebody cannot sleep because his, his brothers graduated and now they two one and they don't have a job. Now you are about to graduate or you have graduated and finishing NYC. So your problem is that, hey, it's getting worse. Number two, when you become easily irritable, and frustrated. When they say one thing, you have answered. It's like the whole world is against you. Have you been there? So why was everything against me? What, what kind of day is this? What, uh, what did I saw when I woke up? It's all those nonsense you say. Yeah, I, 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 the person I saw when I woke up is not a good person, so maybe I should go and sleep back. All of those things just prove to you that you don't believe God's word. Because God's word forever is set. You, you cannot have a bad day. Day unto day, hands are at wisdom. The Bible says the daily load us will benefit the Lord God of our salvation. So what I get every day is his daily benefit. I don't care whether your eyes is blue, green, or yellow. I saw you first. It doesn't matter. You don't dictate how my day pan out. God dictates how my day pan out. The scriptures is my reality. The word of the Lord is my reality. You need to understand that, that when people are irritable because the promise of the Lord are delayed. When you see people, your friends telling you, ah, it's like that, that guy asked me out. You say, ah, I'm happy for you. You hugged. He run you. You hugged. And then you go to and say, ah, is it like this? I'll be continuing, God. You see now, delayed promises is making you irritable. So that they say, will you eat? Mm. Mm. I'm eating. Cook too much salt because you are not even paying attention. You are not. So though you might speak faith or, or sound like a faith person, but there's no faith anywhere. Number three, you act first and pray second. Oh. He says, it's not everything you talk to God about. It's when they start talking like that. You know that they are not the faith, they are not faith people. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't have to talk to God. This simple thing. No, 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 no. When they now do, do, they do it and they are in problem, they will not stop praying. Oh, you have to take it to the Lord in prayers. If you believe God is the king of all the heart, then you must learn to speak to him. You don't think too much about trusting God when you can handle things on your own. You know, people do that. I say, let us pray for exam. They say, I've read. Uh, <laughs> so when they say they have missing grade, <laughs> they, say, they say, what's going on? They've forgotten that the race is not for the sweet. The battle is not for the strong. You've got to put God in everything you do. And then number four, you see, I'm going very quickly. Number four, they worry. You know, there are people that are professional warriors. You know, just you have prayer warriors. You also have a uh, Fear, for fear, fear warriors. You have people who are warriors. They can tell you 25 things it cannot be done. You see? They'll tell you 26 reasons why that real estate company will go down. They will tell you. Without blinking eyes. The revelation is always coming from the devil. They get it straight from the, straight from the kingdom of hell. Straight from him. You know people say straight out of Ibadan. Straight out of Niger. This one is straight out of hell. Everything you tell them, why not do it this way? <laughs> you sorry? You don't understand. We have done it before. <laughs> you see, they talk so well that if you even are pumped up in faith, you don't want to meet them. Because the moment you jam them, ah, it's like your faith will have an accident. Because I say, oh, you too, you want to start that? <laughs> and we say, we've done it. <laughs> oh God, let me even tell you, not let me share my story. I have about seven people. Did it differently? The same result. No waste your time. You see the way they talk. The way they talk to you, you know that you're in trouble. That tells you that they are professional. They, I call them chronic warriors. CWs, chronic warriors. They worry about everything. Jesus said, do not worry. Do not worry. Do not fret. It's a command. It's an instruction. It's not an advice. It's not an advice. 
When you begin to worry about your need, your lack, your impossibilities. Do you know I've discovered people worry about their hair? How, where will I make my hair now? <laughs> How will I make my hair? Just cut the thing. Color it yellow, green, red, blue. Just cut it. It's not a poop pattern. There, there. See, many things you worry about are not necessary. They're not necessary. I remember when I just became a minister. And there was no money. Where will money come from? We live by faith. So because we live by faith, we have all things and upon glory to God. But practically, there was nothing in the account. I had only two trousers. But every day you will never know there were two trousers. I come to church on Sunday. Sometimes you wear the same thing, just change the shirt. Sometimes change the tie. It has been different. You see, you just have to understand. So I look rich. Look rich. It is management. It is management. You are not poor. It is starting from your mindset. Your problem is that you are in lucky, but you are still living with an offer mentality. So that it is not where you are, it is where you are from. I remember when I was in you as, in, as, 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 a, as a man for me, brother. And they would take me to restaurants and they would finish 20,000 at a sitting. Hey! How do you do this? This was, no, this is not 20,000. You know, now they have, they have cuckoo spoiled the naira for you. The time has come. It is the money has failed in Egypt. That's why you have to depend on God. Hallelujah. You see, at that time, money has not failed in Egypt. Glory to God. <laughs> so when I say they spent 20k, it was the time when money was good in Egypt. It was the seven years of abundance in Egypt. You, and they sat down and they'll finish it. Even my landlord, who claims to be poor, will give his wife 15k to go to the market. And he will only cook one pot of soup. And those people know how to enjoy themselves. Ah, you will now say, Coppers, come and join us. Before you say it, we have had. What are you? This kind of a dick icon that is so messed up like this. With apple that knows the way to the intestine. It just goes straight. You know those food that when you put it inside, they know the roots. So even you are feeling how they are going inside. <laughs> we sat down like that. And I remember that if they give my mom 1,000 era, and you people know, 10 years ago, 1,000 era in your houses for soup, they cannot finish it. Now, Yoruba people, ataro, do everything. You blend it, put a pot there, your, your soup is done. That's why they think you are suffering a lot. That's how you people put in soup. One time. So how can somebody finish with it? 15 is like, he has settled that his wife for a month. He'll finish it once. He changed my mentality. Some of you, you, what you need is a mind reset. It's not that God has not been speaking to you, but you can't receive it. Because where you are coming from has told you that God can never do that kind of thing with you. But he's still the God that raised people from the dumb ears. He's still the God who is called the repairer of witches. He's still the God who raised those who have no hope and make them sit even with the king, the king, even the kings of his people. It is not who you, where you came from. It is who you know. And you know the king of all the earth. The Bible says the art of kings and princes are in his hands. Like a course of a river, he directs it wherever he pleases. Sometimes I just imagine God's hand just coming directly towards me like this. Even as I'm sleeping. And somebody is looking at me and saying, Ah, ah! Let me give him a million naira. You see, that's how he moves the hand. Some people will say, it's been a while they have bought from you. It's been a while they are, they are bought from you. It's not like they need clothes. But it's been a while. So they don't wonder what have you been eating. <laughs> Babashe, can you do me three suits? It's not like they need it. It's because your prayers have been answered. Number five, you are afraid. I know people. <laughs> I was saying that in the midweek service. I did a research. And I discovered there are over 100 phobias in the world. 100. Do you know that there is the fear of the dust? Fear of dust is a phobia. Dust. Fear of women is a fear. In fact, when I saw 100, I saw that it was not complete, but they didn't, because they didn't put the fear of Yoruba men. It's not complete. They didn't put the fear of Igbo men. It's not complete. Yoruba them, they didn't put those ones. Fear. And there are over 100 phobias. So that there is even fear of places. 
fear of close places. And now so fear of country. Anglophobia. The fear of England and English. I say, ah! Do you know what people are afraid of? We live in a world where there is a lot of anxiety, fear, and depression. Do you know, if we sit there before me, there are, there, are, there are fears, real fears. People are genuinely afraid of probably not getting married. They are here. Stop pretending they are online, on site. They are afraid. Some people are afraid of not getting good jobs. Some people are afraid. The reason you don't even sleep is that you don't want them to throw your possessions out on the road. That's why you don't sleep. The fear of let me pay my house rent is what is keeping you. Fear. Whenever fear hinders you from taking steps of faith, it means you are not trusting God. Whenever fear stops you from taking steps of faith, it means you are not trusting God. Remember when I was getting married? I'll be where we are supposed to get married. Because the way I speak it, I say like I was the only one getting married. Like I can marry myself. And I remember there was no money. No money is not a problem for people like this because we have gone through the school. Primary school, secondary school, or what you call high school now, university. Now we are PhD students. Do you understand? So that if you say, I don't have money and you are not sleeping, ah, having food and raiment, our brother in the Lord, Paul, said you must rejoice. We sleep. Why? Because he who watches over us never sleeps, no slumber. Because the Lord God is my inheritance. If it be my inheritance, I cannot lack. I may not see it now, but when I need it, it will come. So God told me. The few that came, God said, give it out. Hey! One month to wedding. This is dangerous. I did not hear God. I did not hear God. I canceled it. Get it behind me, Satan. And the more I pray, the more I hear don't touch that money. I say, Ko After a while, package the thing. You know, I am a very sensible man. You know why? Because faith also has reasoning in it. So even if I don't give it, it can probably just buy Ashoki. I, I think these days the Ashoki is not important. When we got married, ah, those were the things you must first of all say to. They would take Agbada. You know the funny thing? That day that I removed the Agbada, I've not seen the Agbada again. I have not seen it. I, I don't even know where it is. 30K has gone like that. 30K those years. And that was what we did. And then God said, give it out. I gave it out though. And we got married. That means the supply came. But do you know that if I was afraid, I would not make that decision in, decision in faith. Many of you, God says, stay in this land. He said, wrong. I'm a Japan. I'm a Japan. Now you have Japas. Now you, you, you are going to Japan now. And you will discover you cannot even sleep. Because your bills is chasing you from Alagbado to Con Place to... Okay, I'm not talking like some people. Glory to God. Number six. When you see the negative more than the positive. Anytime you see negative things more than the positive, it means you are not working in faith. It's... <laughs> you see? Ah. Let us travel. It, did you not hear? They kidnap on that road. That tells me that you're not working. They are kidnapping. Do you look like somebody who's going to be kidnapped? You are the ransom of the Lord. They already pay. It's not, they have kidnapped you already. He has paid the ransom. So they can't kidnap you again. Jesus bought. When Jesus buys you, it means you are in his possession. I am Jesus boss. You are in the ransom. That's you are Jesus boss. That means for anybody to take you or do anything with your life, he has to pay the price to Christ. And Jesus is not poor to sell you again. Even when God is apparently walking around you, you still miss it. Because of your mindset. His negativity you see every time. Every time. Number seven, when you don't listen to God through his word. You know people read the Bible, but they have never heard him speak. Never. It's because of your lack of faith. He won't speak to you because you don't even believe the Bible you are reading. You are reading because pastor says, read. Number eight. When you tell other time to financial prosperity, I mean, but you aren't doing the same. 
You must be the first partakers of the blessings of God. You know, we are the generation that administer drugs we are not willing to use. Just trust God. <laughs> trust him. He can do it. He c- I'm telling you, trust him. Let's believe in God. There's nothing. What God cannot do does not exist. Oh, he will hear you. He will hear you. Now, he's administered the drugs. He's administering the drugs. Wait. Let them tell him at work that one of sacks of people. Hey, daddy. They, they are running around. He just administered drugs now. He can't use it. When you tell others to have faith and something inside of you tells you, you know you need it more than them. You know, you can lie to others, but you can't lie to yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? Some people say you just have to pray. You know, people put it on status, social media, pray seven hours, pray five. Many of them have not prayed seven seconds. But this is a very loud generation, more than practical. They join the noise, not because they are part of the noise, but because they want to be part of a move, even though they don't have the substance for the move. I am asking you, don't you, do you give drugs that you are not using? No, our God can heal you. Now, they just told you now you are 29, you'll be 30 next year. Where would the man come from? I thought you were preaching faith now. That tells you that you are not working in faith. Do you understand what I said to this point? Do you get it to this point? Hallelujah. If you are going to therefore walk in biblical faith, I want to give you things to do. And then we would pray. You will proclaim. I will lay hands on you. And you go home. And you go and make the money. You go and win the souls. You go and get new jobs. You get new clients. Get new opportunities. New possibilities. Revelation chapter 21 and then verse 7. The Bible said, behold, I make all things new. Even God is not interested in the old. I don't know about you, but when the miracles and testimonies I'm sharing about God is from three years ago. I feel that God has left in my life. I don't like that. You know that even in the world of research, apart from Nigerian schools, you can't make some quotation that is behind 10 years ago. You can't, you can't quote them for papers anymore. Even Nigerian schools now. Now, Abby. Now. Ah, no. It's not the course you read. What are you telling me? Uh, I quoted according to Guinea 1976. What are you telling me? Are, 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 are you definitions? Ah, uh, my uh, He defined geographical space as what are you telling me? Please let me face this one because I know those other ones too. Have you did not go? Ah, Jesus, shall know. Have you have you not entered your library? I see the books. Are they been bought new ones? Are there been a reloaded version in the last ten years in some libraries in Nigeria University? You are telling. Please let's go work. Well. Uh, except you want to download freely on internet. But you know that in your life, you should not be like in Nigeria University. The, 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 the miracles, the testimonies should not be, you, you shouldn't be 10 years ago. We're in 2023. Ah, I remember 2003. <laughs> it was one guy that delivered me from that kind of mentality because that mentality is a sickly mentality. A man of God was preaching on fire. He said, you know what? I did not buy fuel. I, I, I was believing God. This was the man said, you know, since I was a boy, he was talking to me. Tell me if you. He said, I was a boy. He's been saying that testimony about somebody feeling in his tank. How much? The man said, how much is feeling in your tank? It's too fine. So what is that in that testimony? I said to myself, Jesus, if these are the kind of people who want to be preaching to, then your miracles and your testimonies must also be updated. Your WhatsApp is updated. If you refuse update it, they will tell you that it will not open. Your miracles, testimonies, realities of God should be updated. And it's not updated, not because of Jesus, it's because of you. You know, I said it in the beginning. If you can believe, all things are possible. All things are possible. We don't take from God because we are not believing him for new things. Are you following what I'm saying? So, proof of biblical faith. Number one, you see, these are just like a revision. I think I've said some things for those who have been following the series, midweek service, online, um, and then Sunday service, I've said many of these things that I want to say again. But because some of you are so arrogant that you think that you are busy and you don't join midweek services, 
I'm going to try and teach it. Understand that? Because you are not so busy. You just like telling yourself you are busy. Glory to God. It shock you. It, that one touch you. I intentionally wanted it to touch you. Amen. Glory to God. So number one, faith is present tense. Faith is always present tense. Faith is not, I will make it. Oh, they make it open. So that's all. I'm not cursing you, but that's all. Faith is present. Faith is in the now. Faith is present or past or past participle or definite article. You don't say maybe. Maybe God will work it out. That's why when we sing, we say, God will work it out. We don't say maybe God will work it out. Maybe God will work it out for me. One thing I think, one thing I feel, God, we walk it out. And then you do at least, be encouraged. Who be encouraged that kind of nonsense? That thinking you are feeling. You say, one thing I know, one thing I found, God, we walk it out. In your life, there must be something you, you, you have found that God will work it out. Now faith is. So you must understand the language of faith. It is present tense. Understand that? Anything outside of it is not what? It's not faith. Everything outside of it is not what? I will sell the land. I will sell the land. No, we have sold the land. <laughs> Glory to God. You have to update. I say, All of you. <laughs> you are not buying. I want to tell you the place so down. <laughs> they say, are you joking? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> they, you just tell them they play. We are, we are, we, you say, we say they play, we go, they pray. You will say they play with the faith. <laughs> with the faith. Because faith will work it out. Faith always has the answer. Faith always gets the poss possibilities done. Number two, biblical faith is powered by confession. Romans chapter 10, verse 10. With the heart man believes. With the mouth confession is made to righteousness. The same way you get saved is the same way you get anything in this kingdom. You, you believe you are wealthy. Do you believe you are going to be wealthy? Do you believe you are going to be wealthy? I mean, some of you still hate money. Because of some of you, I will preach on money. Money is important. Don't tell them, I told you. You see? Do you believe you are going to be rich? You believe that? You believe you are going to be wealthy? No, no. So, do you believe that? Now, if you believe that, I, I, I'm, I'm using that statement intentionally. If you believe that, then you've got to be saying it. I'm rich. I'm loaded. I'm wealthy. I have no lack. I have everything supplied. My barn is full of plenty. They are calling me. Account officers are calling me. Everywhere. Everywhere. Marketers are calling me. You know, that's what they do. When they hear of you, <laughs> they will visit you. Uh, they, will, they will visit you. You, will still, uh, you start speaking like that? Why? Because if you do not confess, it means you are not assenting to what God has said. It's a different thing to find something in scriptures. It's a different thing to sign it. Signing it is through your mouth by confessing. It means I am accepting and assenting what God has said concerning me. That is why confession is called homologio, which is saying what God has said. Hebrews chapter 13 and then verse 5, God has said that I will never leave you nor forsake you so that I may say, the Lord is my helper. So he said it so that you can say. Every time you find something in scriptures, it has been said. But it will not be activated and appropriated in your life until you say it. That's why your mouth is the gateway to your destiny. I tell people, you are the greatest prophet over your life. And that's why God gave you a mouth. Because what you say to yourself, now let me say something to you. How many of us have preached before? Or you sang before? Raise your hand. You preach, or maybe you did a voice note. Raise your hand. When you add yourself, did you like the way you sang? Be truthful now. The first time you had yourself, something screeched. You know what's going on there? That is the first time you are actually hearing yourself. It's not that when you said it, you did not hear it. But there's something about hearing it by yourself through your inner ears. 
Therefore, your inner ears hears whatever you say. And it is programmed to respond to your inner spirit. What your inner core believes, you will eventually become. The way to program your inner spirit is to ensure that your inner ear is hearing what you are saying. The first time you add yourself and you screech, that was your outer ear hearing you for the first time. But when I'm speaking like this, I'm hearing myself. Right? If I'm not hearing myself, it will be difficult to continue. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I'm hearing myself. What, what is hearing? It is entering to me. So therefore, every time you wake up, it's going to be a great day. You are programming your existence. You are programming your hearing. The hearing of faith. That's what the Bible calls it. The hearing of faith. God has said it. You must say it. But many times we don't even know what God has said because we don't have knowledge of the truth. That's why faith begins from knowledge. What you don't know, you can never assess. What you don't know, you can ever enter into. So you first of all, that's why I tell people, read the Bible. So not, not so you can quote it, but so you can know what is God's plan for your life. Now there are three things you must know, three kinds of confession. Number one, the confession of the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8, verses, um, Romans 10, 8 to 10. You believe and then you confess. No one is born again except you first of all confess Jesus as Lord. Number two, the believer's confession of sin. When you sin, the Bible says we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus, the righteous. And you find that in 1 John chapter 1, 16. And then you read from verses 3 to 9 of 1 John chapter 1. And that's very key, very important. Number three, confession is confession of faith in the word of God. Faith in Christ and faith in God the Father. This is very important. This is very key. All right? So that when they say you are cursed, do you agree that you are cursed? Do you agree you are cursed? You see, when I became born again, the first issue my mom had with me is that I never agreed some things. I never. In fact, recently my wife told me, said, the way you speak is like you believe that the devil, even when it is so apparent that this is the devil's work, he said you will be explaining the way. Mm, it's a issue. You know, what I have tried to do and what I intend to do is to demean him so much. You know, when you recognize that, who is playing the keyboard? I don't know the person. You know, you feel somehow, ah, I am me, ah, as big as I am playing, ah, you are saying, say who is playing the keyboard? I can't hear any keyboard though. He said, ah. Do you know when we did press, I was, the, the keyboard was playing? I didn't hear anything. He will want to respond and say, she a demon. You know, because, ah, ah, with all this effort. <laughs> you say he didn't hear. The devil is doing so much effort that the way to disgrace the idiot is to say he is not doing it. So even when apparently I can see, not in English that is devil work, when you're back, I will not accept. I say, you see some people, the way they be, act their life, the devil is there, he's thinking, Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> that's how to do it. Because the more you appropriate power to him, the more you even appropriate power that is not his to him. When people start seeing devil in everything, the things that are not of the devil, they will say he's the one. And I, I've told you before, before, there will be shocks in heaven, surprises in heaven. One of the major surprises in heaven, should I tell you? Do you want to hear? Do you want to hear? Is that one of, that the things you say it was the devil's work. The devil himself will be hearing it for the first time. So when my mom died, the devil came along. The devil said, hey, your mom has died? I'm telling you. He will be hearing it for the first time. And you now know what? He will be say, and he will be swearing along God. I didn't, I didn't know. If they're telling you, I'm telling you. Now listen to this. The second one is that second surprise is that you will see some people in heaven. That you didn't know they would get there. Because you, they were all shows. When you knew them, you see them. The third one is that you yourself will find yourself there. But the fourth one, which is where you have to be careful, is that when you say it is the devil, as you are going to heaven like this, the devil will now come and say, God! He can't go. Say, ah, how can he not go? I die for her. No, sir. He lied now, now, now. Here yeah, against me. That it was me. It was me that caused it, but I didn't know anything about it. So how will you go? 
How will you go? You will lie against them. Yeah. <laughs> you see that that one, you just knew that say God I beg. You know what's going on there? I tell believers, stop appropriating anything to you. We are not devil conscious, we are Jesus conscious. Is the devil alive and active in the world? Yes. Is he alive and active in the believer's life? No. You are not in the world. You are of Christ. He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. If any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things are past, all things are new. You are a new creature. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Look at yourself as a greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I love the translation that said the spirit that is in me has conquered. The spirit that is in the world. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. I can't be cursed. I'm redeemed. 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 Hallelujah. Number three. You have to understand that that faith must be founded on God's word. Whatever you are standing on, he has to stand on the promises of God. You know that song we used to sing? Standing on the promises of God can fail. Standing on the promises of God Don't worry. It's a teaching church. They will not sing. Yeah. Standing, I'm standing on the pro. Listen. You have to understand that that song did not end in children church. That song is for your life and your destiny. It's your Lord and Savior. You must stand on it. Now, people have thought that faith is voodoo. It's a lay, see it, claim it. I see that cat, I claim it. I see that dog, I claim it. I see that cat, I claim it. It's not voodoo. You can't just claim things. That's not how it works. It has to be founded on God's word. You can't see him as a claimer. He beat him as a paddy, I'm serious. You can't claim. What are you claiming? So you can't just stand up now. Somebody has been in a relationship for 10 years. That we are praying that they should get married. You now get there and say, I claim her. <laughs> so you can't, you can't just be claiming. Somebody prayed, believe God for a car. Say, I claim this car. I claim this car. Man of God, God saying anything. He has said what he has said. His word are eternal forever. Not in him. He's not gonna, you know why? People think that is voodoo. Lay it claiming. You can only claim what is in God's word. And you can only claim what God has told you personally. Is somebody listening to me? You can only claim, what did I say you can claim? What is God's word, number one? What God has told you personally. So there, that means there are Rema word. There are logos. So that is the only thing you have the permission to claim. Every other thing is false. Can't claim, I claim visa, I claim visa. He has not told you you travel like you're claiming visa. That's why many people's faith have been bedridden. No one means to be bedridden. Their faith is sick. Because he's disappointed. Are you following what I'm saying? This is the faith that gets the promises of God and the plan of God for your life. Number four, pray for the fulfillment of God's promises. If we do not pray, he only shows that we do not believe. Now, why should I pray when God has said it? Because some people ask that question. You know, I've met people who say, we are faith people, we don't pray. <laughs> I only confess I don't pray. Is your faith greater than Jesus? Jesus prayed, you are not, what are you saying? Ignorance. You know, ignorance speaks loud and fast. Wisdom is quiet and gentle. You see, we are saying four things when we pray. Number one, that we believe his promises are true. Four things we say when we pray. That we believe his promises are true. Number two, that we trust that he will fulfill his promises. We trust that he will fulfill his promises. His promises are true. Number two, he will fulfill his promises. Number three, that we are standing on that promise. That's what we say. That we are standing on his promises and nothing else. And then number four, that we judge him true and faithful. It's on the screen. In case you miss any one of them. That's what we were saying when we pray. That's what we say. Ask and you shall be given sick. You find knock and the door shall be opened unto you. First John chapter 5 verse 14. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, then he hears us. And if we know he hears us, then we have the petition we have asked of him. Glory to God. Do anyone lack wisdom? James 1 5. Let him ask. So you need to ask. Ask concerning that promise. Number five. You need to focus on God's power and ability. 
Focus on the ability of God, not on man. You need a job. God told you he's going to give you a job. Stop focusing on that your brother's uncle, or brother's uncle's mommy's sister that works as a, uh, at Ikoyi or works at um, Ireland or works in the US. That is the one that will do it. You know, we have a way of programming our mind. When God says he's going to bless you, for instance, with financial resources, uh, you kind of look at your circle and start saying, ah, now this one God will use. Because you feel that he's the richest among them. But God does not work that way. He doesn't work that way. I've experienced it. I've seen it. The greatest blessings I've received are from people that I don't even think they have that kind of money. I know one, one lady, one junk student. Bless her ministry. 50K. I called her. No, was it 50? I'd be 70,000. I called her. I said, because you, I mean, I don't collect money like that. I would not call you. You are, you are old boy. I don't need your money. You understand what I'm saying? I want to know that what I'm standing on is blessed. Glory to God. I called her. I said, and see, you know those people who wear skirts, they look normal, no makeup. You have looked at them and said, where would this money come from? And then she said, no. You know, my dad sent me 50K every month. I'm like, I remember 5-5 five, five, in Mokwa, in Mokwa, Paris School. So when Yoruba says the ant is not equal, they actually truly mean it. They are not lying. So now I, I got it. But you know, when we were believing God for that project, I told myself where the money will come. In fact, we wrote letters. Some letters were wasted. In fact, we should not have wasted our letter-headed. Letter-headed paper. We shouldn't have. Because nothing came out from me. But the Lord God of all the earth breathed upon people and delivered it to us. So that it is not where you put your mind. It is what God is said to do. Can you focus on God? He's the one who talks and performs. He says you are going to get married in two years. Stop looking at that boy. If that one is going to talk, he should have talked since. Except he's dumb. But I can see that he seems like he's dumb. That's why you can see it. He's been around you. Oh, first, rally. You see, he's been around you. He got, he got ministry. That's all he's doing. He got ministry. He's not going to say anything. Good guys are coming. You are not giving them, saying, you know, my emotions, my emotions. I'm not ashamed. We don't live by emotion. We live by spirit. I, I, I love him. Is he the first person you will love? Is he going to be the last person if he doesn't marry you? <laughs> no. Love is action. Love is choice. When you choose to stop blushing, you will stop blushing. He walks in. You have become, you have become dumb because he walks in. And the guy can see it. You know, many of these rascals know. They know. So they play you more. They play you more. Focus on God. Not on man. Focus on God. What God has promised, he will perform. Not God has promised, he will do. Certainly what he has said, he will make it come to pass. Titus chapter 1 verse 2, scripture says, God who cannot lie. It's, it means lie is not possible with him. Out of two immutable things, 6, 18 Hebrews, of which it is impossible for God to lie. Surely I have spoken, 23, 19 numbers. So will I do. Faith that receive the promise of God, focus on the ability of God. On the ability, trust and obey. Trust in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not your own understanding. Not your ways. Acknowledge him. And it will straighten your path. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in us. As for us. Our trust is in the name of the Lord. The Bible told us about the result of the two set of guys. He said for them, uh, they stumble and they fall. He said we stand. We rise and we stand firmly. Why? Because our trust is in the name of the Lord. Scripture says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. A lot of times that says the name of the Lord is a pavilion. Unbreakable siege. That's where we are. The devil cannot. You see, he, he, had, a, he had an evil dream. It's because there's a pavilion. He didn't want to give you an evil dream. He wanted to kill you. But he can't reach you, brothers. He can't get to you. Is somebody following me? When you focus on the problem, it becomes bigger. When you focus on Jesus, Jesus becomes bigger. Israel focused on the giants. They went down. Caleb and Joshua focus on God. They shift your focus to God and they enter into the promised land. We also shift your focus from the economy in Nigeria. 
Shift your focus that there is new old, old, old new no old notes, new notes, old notes. Shift your focus to God. There's no note with God. It's still silver and gold. It's still silver and gold. Those who understand economics understand that what backs up your Naira is gold. In countries where they are still saying they are not supposed to print more than their gold reserve. Countries that they are still okay. Continue with me. Whatever you look at becomes bigger in your heart. Let your focus be at the victory of Carver. 320 of Ephesians. I always love that verse. Bible says, and God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above. I think far is enough. But he said far above what you think or even imagine. So let me say this to you. It means that what you think is the foundation and the seed upon which God will build upon. He said he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you think or even so that if God is going to bless you, it's going to be maybe 100%, 1,000%. That's what he says, far above. 1,000%. Of what? Of your thoughts. That's why I tell you, you have to think where? Think possibilities. Stop thinking, if I can buy a bike and techno, I'll be fine. But make it. All those things. I mean, think, think where? So that when you get to heaven, it will not be like, ah, God, why did I not have it? You didn't think it. <laughs> you didn't think it. I love podcasts, saloons. When I got to Lagos, I began to change my mind because of the water. So now I'm thinking SUV. But I'm not thinking SUV. If you hear the amount of money they are sending SUV, I'm thinking about. See, you, even if, I love the way I say, my God, listen, even if, even if, even if you think it won't come to pass, you know it does not matter. And that's what I love about God. Even if you think I'm crazy, it doesn't matter. Even if you think I'm greedy, it doesn't matter. Whatever you think, it does not matter. You see, that's why I love God. It's personal. What your friends think does not matter. I see I will marry, I will live in a co- It does. Oh, that's what they're doing. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Half of the things you trust, co- matter. The one the, the, who matters with is the one who controls the matter. His name is Jehovah. His name is Jehovah. <laughs> ah, should I hand here? I want us to pray. Number six, live in praise and thanksgiving. Philippians chapter four, verse seven says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. What does it mean to be anxious? It means to feel, show worry, nervousness, unease. It means to be very eager and concerned about something. I remember the story of this lady who was like a daughter to me those days. When she has an exam, she almost dies. When she has an exam, she almost dies. I've never seen that level and grade of anxiety in my life. She will be fidgeting. You will know that while I day. Because I will be quoting scripture and praying for her. Do you know what I used to do? I will collect her notes and read it. Microbiology. And I will be teaching her what it says. This is not a 200 level student, 400 level. Fear will not even let her comprehend anything. Anxiety. Bible says that's not the answer. The answer is to pray. Praise. When you are afraid, can you begin to praise God? Can you begin to praise God? He who lives in praise lives in faith. How can your faith see the promise of God fulfilled? By praising. Those who walk in faith understand praise and worship. Just keep worshiping God. Hallelujah. Okay, there's only one more, so there's no need to quit on you. Number seven, patiently await the promise of God. He that believes will not make haste. Let patience have a perfect work that you may be entire, you may be entire and lacking nothing. It took a total of 25 years for Abraham to enter into the promise of God concerning a child. 25 years. Joseph waited for 13 years concerning a dream. How many years? I thought you said God was slow concerning you. No, I, no, Shabby, you said God was slow. Have you waited 13 years? <laughs> Moses waited 40 years to see leadership and deliverance. 40 years. 
if God is making you wait, I've got good news for you. You are in good company. You are in the company of the Patrax. You are in company of giants. Because the devil will always give you alternative. And when you take the alternative of the devil, you are always settling for less. I told a lady, you know there are people you don't talk to in English. Don't marry him. That's all you said concerning the last one. That's all. I say, ah, have you seen my wife? I am not partly married. I'm fully married with three children as evidence. I'm not trying to stop you from getting married. But if all you keep bringing are monkeys, I must tell you they are monkeys. It's my duty to you. You have to make for the man to come. He said, no, 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 no. You know, when they are in love, they, are, they don't listen. They don't listen. I'm going to teach on that on Valentine's Day. Love is blind. Is it? You will hear it. He said, oh, love is... I spoke, spoke, shared revelation. Mbanu. Is that not, is that saying it anymore? Aha, he didn't do it. She went ahead and got married. Glory to God. We, I won it. He said, come and sign. I didn't even enter. I didn't sign. Because I know it's not going to work. Glory to God. Months later. Somebody say months later. I'm about to share revelation. So he say months later. She contacted me. Which years? If you know that song, you know how it started. How it it's only a jotoku. We just talk. I can't tell you to leave. We will now be teaching you how to manage. And 70 years is a long time to manage. You know why? She was not patient. All our friends have got to marry me. The moment she got married, I let just shoot straight. Darkness just came immediately. Let me say this to you. If you think you are listening to the voice of pressure, you are wasting your time. There's nothing called pressure. It's your decision to follow pressure. My pastor told me when I was in university, DDD, decision determines destiny. It's my mom that made me marry her. It's my daddy that made me marry her. I would not have traveled abroad. It was my friend. In the final analysis, it was your decision to follow their pleasure. In the final analysis, it is your decision. Your life is your decision. And when they say it's getting worse, marriage is not worse. Marriage is worse, yes. Your own has met you. Literal translation. I just want you to know that when it comes to marriage, you cannot be too sure. It's better to be patient and to be too sure and to listen to the voice of cancer. That's why I love ladies who are stupidly ignorant. They say, my friend said he's a good person. Your friend that has never had God, that sleeps around. Your friend that sleeps around, never had God. She has become your chief consultant when it comes to marriage. What is it? Why, why, where is the pool of advice coming from? Ah, <laughs> uh, from experience. You know, that's Ibo, Kiniko. That's how we change. do so when you do that. If she knows better, her marriage would have been better. And I hope that you understand that wearing the same clothes does not mean anything. That's for another day. For everybody, I will teach you people on love. <clears throat> Somebody says, I don't know how to know I'm in love. We'll teach it. Because some of you are in love, you don't know. Wasting your time. I'm praying God, praying God. God is thinking, should I just slap her so that her face can clear? This is the person. Why are you disturbing me? <laughs> we must wait for the performance of God's promises. You remember the story of the fig tree? You remember the story of the fig tree? Jesus spoke to the fig tree and what happened to the fig tree? When did it dry? But they didn't see that dry up. The next day they walked and said, ah, it has dried up. But the moment he said he had introduced the angel of death through his voice. Jesus killed it by his voice. But it was not apparent. Listen, sometimes it takes a journey for what you have been saying to become manifested. But even when it starts manifesting, people will start saying that, ah, you want to bless hell. 
Because Peter was the one telling Jesus. So people will come and tell you, ah, guy, how come we could do no? How did God do it like this? Ah. And they will not understand that they saw you 20 years from now, but you have been speaking for 10 years for that 20 years to manifest. It's a process of time. God is not a magic one God. He's a God of process. If God to keep speaking, he sowed the seed. He said the seed of the woman is going to come and defeat the seed of the snake, of the serpent. Do you know how many years it took? More than a thousand years. But God said it. And through the prophet, he kept saying it. He kept saying it. And there was a manifestation. You can reorder your generation. I know your grandfather did tell you but you can reorder your generation. If you have a mouth, you can do it. If you have a mouth, it can work for you. Listen, we have come today to order and ordain people to their destiny. And this is just the first half of the sermon. There is a second half of this sermon. And the second half is that God wants to baptize you with the equipping and the empowerment that you need for life and for destiny. What you need for 2023 to work for you, God is going to give you today. I've stand before God and I've asked him. And he has told me, if my people who are called by my name will speak before me, and then you lay hands on them, it's going to happen as you have said. Now, why do we lay hands on people? What is laying on our hands for? It's a means of spiritual transference. Scripture says that God told Moses to lay hands on Joshua, and the same spirit that was upon him was going to be manifested even upon Joshua. So it's a process of spiritual transference. When I lay hands on you, why do people fall down? Why do some people roll? It's because when you put hands on folks, and what you are doing to them is that you are putting a measure of God upon them. Now, the measure of God, it's what you will therefore need for whatever it is that is your need. I'll explain that. So if somebody needs healing, you lay hands. The measure of God to that person is healing. Somebody needs a breakthrough, you lay hands. The measure of God, it's a breakthrough. Somebody needs speed. Because you can see that with your vision book and with the pace you are going, it's going to take you three lives. To be able to fulfill it with the speed you are going. So what that person needs is acceleration. When the measure of God comes upon him, he quickens him like he came upon Elijah. And that's what we're talking about. When the measure of God comes upon you, he gives you that measure. So that the same laying on of hands, but different manifestations to different folks. Because the measure of God are different for people. And you don't understand what I'm saying to you. So that you have come to an atmosphere now called the atmosphere of miracles. Uh, where you know God told me, say 2023 is going to be a race uh, even of the supernatural. It's going to be how much of God you carry. It's going to be about the measure of God. Uh, people are trying to sell, sell things. You're also trying to sell things. Uh, people are looking for promotion. You're also trying to get promotion. Uh, people are looking for new clients. You're also looking for new clients. Uh, people are looking for help. You're also looking for help. What will make the difference between you and them uh, is the God that is in your race. Uh, that's what we call grace. Uh, it's the potential of God that you carry. I don't know whether you are testing for God in this place today. If you are, can you just begin to pray in the spirit if you can? Come on now, come on now, come on now. Come on now, come on now, come on now. Come on now, come on now, come on now. Come on now, come on now, come on now. Let God know I'm interested. Let God know whether you are online, you are on site. It doesn't matter. There's no distance in the realm of the spirit. Can you begin to press into God? Can you begin to press into God? I cannot go by myself. I cannot run by myself. I cannot go by myself. I cannot run by myself. Lord, I need you. 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 Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. Oh, come now, my blood. Blessed Savior, I call to thee, my little Osha. Eme de 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 dumbra ka de de dumbra ka le balabarosha. Ebra ta balabalabalabarasha. If you have run with men and you are tired, how will you be able to run with horses? If you have run with men and you are tired, how will you be able to run with horses? Kalepa latola braka sakata. Emma tataka palaka tabataba. Efra toto blaka sakata. There is more. There is more in God. I know there is more. I know there is more. Palabasha. Ebraka palabasha. I know there is more. If you can stand on your feet, you 
God stand up? Can you begin to press in to God? Can you begin to press in to God? You didn't come here today by mistake. You didn't come here today by accident. God program you now. He program you for today. Melusha kapa otototopolata efrakali klatabasha. Thank you for listening. This has been The Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadeni at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.